Hey gang, recently one of my children asked me if we could get a checkerboard. And being the kind, loving, and generous father that I am, I said, of course we can get a checkerboard. But we're not going to go buy one. Not when we've got wood we could make one out of. So, for today's video, we're going to be making a checkerboard. So for today's video, we're going to be working with a couple different types of wood. You want to get that sort of dark and light combination for your checkerboard. So we're going to be going with some rich mahogany and a little wood I like to call Aspen. The first thing we're going to do is rip our stock down to about two inches wide. According to the internet, a standard checkerboard is made up of 64 two by two inch squares. Next, I'm going to cut those strips down to just north of 16 inches so that I have four strips of aspen and four strips of mahogany. If you're doing the math along at home, that will give us a rough dimension of 16 by 16 inches or 256 square inches, which I will trim down to the proper dimensions of precisely 16 by 16 after my glue up. Speaking of glue ups, we are ready to roll on our first glue up. After my last glue up, when I did not have long enough clamps to properly clamp my project, I went and bought some pipe clamps. So hopefully that makes things go a lot easier on this one. I went a little heavy on the glue here, but I'd rather have too much than not enough since it's fairly easy to sand the glue off after the glue up. Assuming you left your strips of wood a little bit on the long side, they don't need to be perfectly flush with one another, but it's still nice to get them as close as you can. Waste not, want not. The pipes on my pipe clamps were so long that I actually had to clamp them down to keep them from tipping over. Clamping a clamp, how perverse. I highly recommend some sort of clamping calls as you're gluing up your project just to keep all the ends of the wood aligned. Just remember to cover the calls with some sort of non-stick coating. I like packing tape. Otherwise you're going to find yourself in a bit of a sticky situation. The more clamps the better I guess. Just don't go so tight as to take your project out of alignment. Let's see how we did. These glue ups never seem to go perfect for me, but a little bit of sanding and elbow grease usually seems to solve that problem. Back to the table saw for some more cutting. I'm going to trim off the edges to square them up and then I'm going to cut 2 inch by 2 inch strips going in the opposite direction. You can kind of start to see the checkerboard coming together now. Now we're ready for glue up number two. This time we're going to stagger the pieces so that the mahogany and the aspen squares go every other. If you couldn't figure that out for yourself, it might be time for a new hobby. Shoot, I faced that first strip in the wrong direction. It might be time for me to find a new hobby. The glue up and clamping will otherwise follow the exact same process as before. Uh, just really make sure everything is in line. Any issues with alignment will really be amplified now that the pieces are staggered. Just so I don't leave you wondering, I'm definitely speaking from experience.
And we're going to trim up the edges one more time. This is where it really becomes important that you had a little extra wood to begin with so that your checkerboard ends with the proper dimensions. At this point in the video, I'm really wishing I had a planer, but I don't. And the pieces weren't aligned very well, so I had to start out with the belt sander. Because I want a really flat surface, I'm drawing on my checkerboard with a pencil first. That way, as I remove the pencil marks, I know I'm taking off about the same amount of material throughout the entire project. You could end the project here and put some finish on it and call it good, but because I'm so fancy, I want to make a nice decorative frame for the outside of my checkerboard. To start, I'm going to cut some thin strips of aspen, strips that are so thin that unfortunately my push stick is too wide for them. Then I'm going to cut them to 45 degree angle and glue them up to frame out my checkerboard. Looking good-ish. Now I'm going to cut some wider strips of mahogany and glue those up in the same process, making sort of a double frame situation. I went with the table saw and the cross cut sled instead of my miter saw because I had a nice fine tooth blade on my table saw and so that just gave me a little bit cleaner cuts if anybody is wondering. It would have been really cool to do some sort of a metallic inlay like a gold or a brass or bronze or something like that, but I don't even know where to get such material, let alone cut it. So we just went with the Aspen. Woof, that is a lot of glue squeeze out. Fortunately, I have quite a bit of sanding to do yet. After framing, I started with a 120 grit sandpaper and then worked my way all the way up to, I think, 400 because I had 400 grit sanding pads, so why not? To finish it, I used a natural colored Danish oil. Uh, I've used this one other time when I made my coasters, which oddly enough look very similar to this checkerboard. And the reason I like Danish oil so much is because it's about as easy as it gets when it comes to applying a finish. Wipe it on, let it dry, apply additional coats if you wish, and then wipe off any excess after it's had about 15 minutes of dry time. Can't get much easier. I like to exfoliate my wood before I drill it. Alright, let's try this again using the proper equipment. For the actual checker pieces, I used aspen wood and then I stained them to match the mahogany approximately with some stain that I had laying around. I will add that sanding the edges of these circular pieces was a big pain. Who would have thought? For the lighter colored pieces, I just used the same Danish oil that I used on the checkerboard itself. And then I gave all of the pieces a good shellacking after they were dry. This was a pretty fun build. And my wife actually said that it looks cool, so that's a big win. Can't wait to try it out. I hope you enjoyed this latest addition to the Weekend Woodworker playlist. As always, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill.